This is a quote from the Broadway play Hamilton that I absolutely love. The quote was spoken by the main character, Alexander Hamilton, and he said, I think about death so much it feels like a memory. It sounds like a morbid quote, but I don't see it as such. The way that Hamilton was written in the play, he's most likely an ENTJ, so he's the closest thing you'll get to an INTJ. And I could see an ENTJ possibly saying something like this as well. The reason why I'm bringing up that quote is because I can relate to it. I often think about death because it's inevitable. How can an NI Dom who is almost always focused on the future not see death around every corner? Because death is our inevitable future. But this video isn't about sadness. The point and purpose of this video is just to acknowledge the morbid reality that INTJs tend to live. A side of the INTJ that we don't show many people because most people can't fathom how deep the INTJ's introvert intuition and introverted feeling goes and why we haven't lost our mind yet. And as with everything that has to do with MBTI, it comes down to the placement of our cognitive functions. Without going into too many details about cognitive functions, INTJs lead with introverted intuition, which is a cognitive function that has no limits. The third cognitive function for an INTJ is introverted feeling, which is a function that seems bottomless. The other two functions has a huge role as well, but I'll address it later in the video. Before I begin this video, I'd like to ask all of you watching this video a question. And this isn't a rhetorical question, please leave a comment below. How grim does your reality get? What is that glimmer of hope that keeps you going? Please leave a comment below so we can normalize talking about this topic, topic of death and topic of existentialism. As an INTJ having introverted intuition as our first function, that means that we can see likely future possibilities that most people can't even imagine. How do you think it affects an NI DOM when we see a solution that could benefit the mass, but then see humanity steer towards something more convoluted and more harmful? Not only harmful towards humanity, but also towards animals, the environment, our future, and everything that has to do with the world because everything is interconnected. It's really easy for us to lose faith in humanity. And it's not because we witness humans making the wrong decision all the damn time, but it's also because we're NI doms, which means that we're able to experience the reality where the right decision was made, but we don't see it happening in real time. Now let's start factoring introverted feeling into the equation. NI sees how things can play out for the benefit of the majority and witness humanity doing the exact opposite. But then we have introverted feeling, which is a function that we can't ignore. And we see people not only taking the wrong path, but also violating basic human rights and pillars that we hold deeply to our FI identity. Introverted feeling is our value system, and it constantly gets violated. Which leads to the tendency of an INTJ to ignore people or not give someone or something a chance because we can usually predict with accuracy whether someone will let us down or violate our FI values. So as an act of self-preservation, it's just easier for us to stop engaging with these people or just not care. Introverted intuition doms, the INTJ and the INFJ, tends to have a morbid view of reality at a younger age and not really understand why we view the world that way. It's because NI is trying to make sense of everything, and the world doesn't make sense. There are contradictions everywhere, and everything is essentially a contradiction. We can't just focus on all the positives in life, such as cute animals, enjoying time with loved ones, or witnessing the birth of your child, your niece or nephew, someone that you will adore for the rest of your life. We also focus on the negative aspects of life, and the negative aspect of life is horrible. It includes death, slavery, famine, and all other atrocities. And I is not a function that we can turn off like a TV channel where if we don't like the episode, we can change it to something else. For an NI Dom, we are NI. We can't help but witness these atrocities. The difference between the INFJ and the INTJ is that the INFJs have extroverted feeling as their second cognitive function, so they actually feel the weight of all the injustices personally. Whereas for the INTJs, we're a bit luckier because we're thinkers and we have mama extroverted thinking as our second function. We have the ability to ignore it, but we will break. The INTJ will eventually break. And this is where introverted feeling comes into the picture. An aspect of introverted feeling that isn't commonly talked about is the ability to connect with commonalities with someone else and to see a glimmer of spark within someone that your FI can relate to. Extrovert thinking wants us to get shit done. And if that means to hide our emotions or push it to the back burner, as long as that's possible, it will happen. But extrovert thinking usually isn't mastered until early adulthood. And outside of personality theory, a hormonal teenager, regardless of MBI type, will be 
a teenager with a lot of emotions and attitude. And INTJ's FI will be stronger than TE in most cases during our teenage years. So contrary to the title of this video, the younger INTJ tends to live life in a more nihilistic way, accepting that the world is full of harsh realities and injustices, and that we have no control over it. This nihilistic viewpoint is a cascading effect because not only is the INTJ now focused on all the injustices in the world, we tend to ignore other people because FI is afraid of getting hurt. We realize that bad things happen to good people, and sometimes there's nothing we can do about it. Life sucks for everyone. There's no meaning to life. You're just living to die. But I said earlier that this video isn't meant to be a sad video. So here comes the unsung hero of an INTJ. The most underrated function for the INTJ makes an appearance and starts slowly dragging us out of the depth of our self-loathing that consumes a majority of our teenage and young adult life. This function, ladies and gentlemen, is extroverted sensing. But extrovert sensing also has help from extroverted thinking, and let me explain why. Mama extrovert thinking has always been around for an INTJ. That's why we've always been able to achieve so much in our life, even as a child. But mastery of her doesn't begin until our teenage years. That's why INTJs can be the most emotional teenager in a room, and no one will ever be able to tell. It's because extrovert thinking protects the INTJ. She tells us that life happens, and we just have to suck it up. She tells us that if we care about something so much, then we should want to be part of the solution. And if we don't care to be part of a solution, then INTJ, do we really care that much about that topic? Extroverted thinking constantly challenges introverted feeling. Which introverted feeling is a funny function for an INTJ because it's not very strong because we have extroverted thinking above it, but we still feel this feeling of helplessness a lot of the time because we witness people that we look up to constantly let us down. We witness all of our heroes fall from grace and we witness humans making unethical decisions on a daily basis. How can an emotionally driven INTJ teenager who is just trying to get past the social politics of high school expect it to have a positive view of the world? And the answer is simple, extroverted sensing. A lot of projects that the INTJ work on has this discoverability aspect to it, whether it's people, ideology, and whatever else they're working on. That's where extroverted sensing comes in. Extroverted sensing helps us expand our understanding of the world and allows us to accept it for what it is. Extroverted sensing is the function that the INTJ relies on to get us out of the house and engage with the world. Even though I'd rather stay home on a Friday night because going to the party means that I'd have to dress up, do my hair, figure out where to park, put gas in the car because I didn't expect to drive it so soon, and the worst part, socializing with strangers. Extroverted sensing tells us that maybe, just maybe, we'll have fun. There will be lots of times where you have the worst night of your life and it stops you from going out for the next six months to maybe even years. Then there are other times when you have the time of your life. But regardless of the outcome, a single truth remains. That by being at the party physically, you're able to observe human nature. You're able to observe humans in their natural habitat and collect data to answer some of the questions that your NI couldn't figure out through research. Dots will start connecting. These insights are extremely valuable insights that you have to experience yourself because most method of collecting data through some form of media doesn't get as in depth as our NI requires. I can't stress enough how much important data is left out when you're reading about something as opposed to experiencing it yourself. How does this all relate to the title of the video that the INTJs tend to be optimistic nihilists? Is as I said earlier in this video. Not only does NI focus on all the negative aspects of life, but we also can't help but focus on the goodness in life. For people who tend to go out to clubs or bars a lot with their friends, you're probably not surprised hearing stories about a lady being in the bathroom stall with their lady friend holding the hair out of their face while they start vomiting. And even as a dude, that was me at one point because I had long hair. It sounds irresponsible that the person yakking should have stopped drinking a long time ago, which is the negative view of the situation. But now, let's shift focus on the positive side. The positive aspect is that even in their most vulnerable state of intoxication, this person has someone that is willing to be there and take care of them. It means that out of the kindness of their own heart, they are willing to ruin their own night to take care of another person. And sometimes, I've seen this before, is taking care of a random stranger that you've never met before. I can't tell you guys the amount of times I was out in town with my friends and I witnessed random acts of kindness. Acts of kindness such as ladies protecting other ladies from creeps, 
to random guys hyping each other up in the bathroom because we saw a dude breaking down over their most recent breakup. The camaraderie that, hey, you're not alone. You're here with us. And if you're here with us, we will take care of you. Random fucking strangers who has nothing to personally gain from these moments, but yet are willing to do something out of the kindness of their own heart to take care of someone else. These are really small examples and are rare compared to the amount of negatives associated with going out, such as long wait lines, being in cramped spaces, and overpriced drinks. But those moments that I was able to witness from my fellow human siblings, moments that we can never fully understand the depth of kindness associated with it unless we see it ourselves or go through it ourselves, those are the moments that helps the INTJ truly evolve. Because how can an INTJ say that humans suck if we see those moments of positive humanity. Both humans suck and humans are great can be true at the exact same time. I know a lot of people in the type community likes to stereotype INTJs and put us in this box that we don't give a shit about anything or that we're some sort of robot. Although partially true, that doesn't explain the other 80% of INTJs, the side of the INTJ that most people who love being around, the healthy INTJs. The INTJs who always seem confident and brave even when things start going sour. The INTJ that energizes and hypes people when talking through their plans with us. The INTJ that brings this level of peace to the environment when everyone else is panicking and the world seems as if it's burning down. It's not because the INTJ doesn't care. It's because we've experienced and witnessed enough positives that we're able to see a positive even in dire situations. The world is a spectrum. They will always be good if there's evil, because the word evil wouldn't exist unless you have something to compare it to. I know this video seems as if I'm bouncing all over the place, but it's difficult to explain why we are the way we are. NI is non-judgmental. We accept patterns as we see them, which means that we can easily see a positive as a negative or a negative as a positive if things change slightly. Extroverted thinking keeps an INTJ objective on facts. The world can't fully suck if we witness random acts of kindness, but the world can't also be great knowing that humans are still being trafficked. Introverted feeling is constantly let down by people that we admire, but introverted feeling also gets hopeful knowing that we're not the only people that feel a certain way about things. Extroverted sensing will ensure that we collect enough data to make a decision that aligns with our introverted intuition patterns. And even if introverted feeling wants to shut the INTJ out from the world, Extroverted sensing will constantly remind her that just because it's cloudy outside doesn't mean the sun isn't shining. An INTJ will start the earlier part of our lives in this emotional state, focusing on the negative parts of life rather than positive due to our lack of usage of extroverted thinking and extroverted sensing. We'll put ourselves in a bubble and only tend to experience life through an I, which is research filled with biases. It's only when we start engaging the world with extroverted sensing that extroverted thinking is able to reason with introverted feeling. That introverted feelings can't be fully true if we witness the opposite firsthand. And the more time it happens, the more times that we're able to witness the beauty of life and see a pattern, the more that we're able to expand our mind. To tie a knot in this entire video, the Hamilton quote, I think about death so much it feels like a memory. I don't see it as a negative quote. I don't actually think I was ever afraid of death. I've learned a lot about myself because I think so much about it. What I realize is that the thing I'm scared of the most, something that I think is way more frightening than death itself, is not living life and not being able to see how far I can go in this life. I accepted that death will come for me one day. I actually wrote this poem about death when I was in kindergarten and the teacher brought my mom in because they thought something was wrong with me because I'm a child thinking about death. But death isn't scary. I accept that life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. Life is gonna suck at times. But I also accept and acknowledge that there is kindness in the world as long as you're willing to see it. I wanna end this video with a famous quote from someone I truly admire. If you're from the US, you know his name. It's Mr. Rogers. In dire situations, Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And that's all for my video, folks. Thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate all the comments, likes, and every positivity that I get thrown at me. I can't thank any of you enough, but just thank you for being here. I hope you have a great day.